Well, good morning. God is good, amen? God is a good God. I'm not going to take too much of our time here because my friend here, Shannon, wants to share the word with us this morning. But I want to give you a brief background of our friendship and our relationship. Shannon and I have known each other since 2009. It's been that long. Mm -hmm. We went to Illinois School of Ministry together. Uh, we went through the same courses and uh, just bonded a friendship that just lasted, has lasted and will last for many, many years to come. Uh, we, we are of like mind in how we view the Scripture and how we view God and the importance of God in, in our lives and the, and, and the desire to share God and to see people changed for Jesus Christ. And Shannon and I uh, have a kindred spirit of, of how God should, how God would move and should move in our lives and, and, and the importance of God in our life. As we talked, I think as we talked last night and as we talked this morning, uh, just, a, just a fullness there of understanding of what God would want to do here this morning and in the lives of all of us here this morning and how in the lives of he and I. Uh, so God is, God is doing good things. God is moving in a great way. So I'm going to just go ahead and turn it over to Shannon. If you'd stand up here, Shannon, let's go ahead and pray over you and receive you. Uh, sharing in the Word. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for this, this mighty man of God that, Lord, You have brought into my life as a friend. And Lord, just pray right now that You'd anoint him by Your Spirit that Your Word would flow from Him like rivers of living water, Father, and that your, our hearts would be open to You, and our hearts would be attentive to Your voice and to Your Spirit. And we thank You and we give You praise. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. Well, like Pastor Josh said, I'm Shannon. My wife's Becky. I'm sure you've all met her by now. We really, really are happy that um, you guys are having us here today to worship with you. I haven't had an opportunity to go out of Clinton too often to preach, but this is uh, this was a uh, asked pastor, your pastor asked me. I'm like, yeah, that'd be great if you know your congregation will have us. So. We're very happy that you had us here, so thank you very much for having us here today. Um, like I said, my name is Shannon Bale, and uh, my wife is Becky, and I would like to, like I said, I'd like to thank you for having us all here. I would like to start telling you a little bit about me. You, I, I believe that we need to know what's in front of us and preaching to us. So I didn't always live a life that would allow me to full, fulfill a pulpit, if you know what I mean. So I want to give you a little bit of my background so you know what's preaching to you, okay? So if you allow me to do that, and maybe not judge me too bad, <laughs> because uh, it, it, it wasn't always a pretty sight, okay? Let me just put it to you that way. But the Lord is good, right? He's very good. Like I said, I would like to tell you a little about, about, about my background. So here's a little bit of my testimony. As a young man, I came to church. I was in church. My mom, you know, brought me to church. Um, I come from a divorced family, so um, it was just my mom and my me, me and my brother. So we'd go to church. She she'd take us to church, and that was it was good. We'd go to Sunday school. So, you know, I love Sunday. I love my Sunday school teachers. They were just if you guys went to Sunday school, you know what I mean. It, they they mold you, and they're just amazing people. In a child's eye, you're like this person's talking from God you know what I mean it's it's it was a I just like I said I really love my, my my Sunday school teachers and even now my wife and I are Sunday school superintendents at our church so we really have a heart for Sunday school but um like I said I would also listen to the pastor, pastor sermons I wouldn't just you know duck out after Sunday school and not listen to the pastor sermons he uh he had a lot to say that God had to say to me so I needed to hear and what I needed to hear but as I got into my teenage years, if any of you know anybody about teenagers, my focus became less on Jesus. It became on what the world had to offer Shannon. And with that, um, less and less I was going to church and less and less I was listening to Jesus. And that really wasn't good for me. 
But God, he stays right there. Just like uh, he did with Abraham. He stayed right there with him the whole time. Um, I would only call on Jesus when I needed him in my teenage years. And of course, he was always right there where I left him. Sitting right where he was, where I left him, was the Lord there. I would ask him to help me with a, a friend. I had, you know, when I was a kid, um, one of my friends got in a terrible car accident in front of me and, and passed. You know, and in that moment, I needed something and I needed Jesus. And that was in my teenage years and he showed up. He comforted my heart. He kept me solid, you know, during that time because that was a terrible time for my friend's family. You know, they thought for some reason or another it was my fault that he got in the accident because I was like behind him, you know, when I was driving. So uh, it was a tough time. But the Lord, once again, like I said, I was away from him, but I knew who I needed to call on when that time came. And he was right there with me. Um, but about 12 years ago, I'd say, yeah, it's been 12 years ago, God really got my attention. And how he did that was, there was a night that I was getting ready to go to the bar. I was doing the bar scene. And um, I had, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I was an alcoholic. And this was New Year's, this is New Year's Eve, so everybody knows New Year's Eve, you know, it's a big party night, things like that. And... I'm sit, but I'm sitting in my trailer and, you know, getting ready to go, get my shoes on and stuff like that. I get up from the seat at the, at the kitchen table. I can just remember it just so clearly because God really spoke to me in this time. I went over to the doorknob to leave the house and I felt God's spirit speak into my heart. Now, I didn't hear this audible voice of God, okay? I'm not telling you that. What I'm telling you is he spoke into my heart just like he speaks into your heart. Just like I think he's doing right now. He's speaking something into your heart, whether you hear my words or not. I think he's piercing our hearts even as we you know, come to him and worship this morning. So I touch the doorknob and I, hear, I, I, I feel like I hear this voice in my heart. Shannon, this is the last time I'm calling you. See, the Lord had called me to ministry many years ago when I was a kid. He, I knew then how much I loved being around the God, people of God and, you know, being around Sunday school like I spoke of, but I just kept on turning a blind eye to it. Oh, God doesn't want to use me. You know, I'm doing all these negative things I shouldn't be doing. I'm the last person he wants to use. That's, that was what I was thinking, but he seriously spoke to me. And like I said, this was the first time it ever happened, so it freaked me out a little bit. Now, I'd like to tell you that I didn't go out that night, but I still went. And actually, the Lord did it a second time when I touched the doorknob, but I didn't listen. I still had a hard heart and I went and did what I needed to do, what I thought I needed to do. But from that day forward, what happened at the bar was something that I would never expect. It was like no one knew me and I knew everybody at that place. But I was walking around and it was like I was a ghost, folks. It was like no one, no one knew me at all. So I didn't understand what was going on until the Lord spoke to me again and he said, this, I don't want you in this place. So I went home and from there on out, the Lord took away alcoholism from me. He took away drugs. He took away my desire to uh, do things that shouldn't be done. It was just a manifestation of the Holy Spirit that spoke to me that brought all this on. So it, that's what's in front of you today, folks. Someone that's came out of the miry clay and the Lord has molded me to preach His Word now. And I am very, very thankful for it. Um, as we take a look at Scripture today, I would like for us to look at abiding in Jesus or to abide in Jesus. There are many places in Scripture where abiding in God or abiding in Jesus is spoken of. If you uh, go to a, any concordance in the back of your Bible or if you look up anything on Google, look up abiding in the Bible, you're going to see it often. And it's in the New Testament and the Old Testament. So it's, it's spoke of very often. And what I like to do when I'm talking about a certain uh, word, I like to go and find out what, what does the meaning, what does it actually mean? So I went into the, of course, the dictionary and into my concordance. And it says to abide or abiding means to stay in a given place. To stay in that, in that place, like in your home, your abode. 
to give to stay in a given state like if i would have stayed in my given state of my younger years i wouldn't be where i am today that would have been a given state to dwell to dwell to stay in to endure i didn't even catch this one but to endure you have to stay steadfast you have to abide and the in the abiding enduring comes with it to be present to remain to stand or to tarry to stay with i'm sure you've all heard the word tarry to stay within uh tarry at the altar or tarry uh in in prayer we need we need to do that on a, on a very regular basis when we abide in jesus he becomes our everything i mean i do mean everything nothing is above him nothing at all he, we have to stay within him because if not we'll miss it <laughs> often um, like I said, nothing comes before him. Those of us that have known Jesus for some years could say, I abide in Jesus. Could you say, I abide in Jesus? I think I abide in Jesus. Lois, I know you've been coming for a while. I know you abide in Jesus, right? But my question for us all today, and not just who I'm preaching to, but also to me, is does the world in which we live see that Jesus abides in us? Does it? It's a very posing question. Does the very Jesus abide in us? Because we know we abide in Him because we what? We received Him as our Lord and Savior, right? So that gives Him the opportunity to abide in us. But do we abide in Him? And then another, and another question, like I said, does the world see that Jesus abides in us? Does He? And we need to pose that question to ourselves when we wake up. How are folks going to see Jesus abiding in us today? The difference in abiding in us and in us abiding in Him look altogether different to those around us. We all think a little different, wouldn't you agree? We all got a little weight, our little different quirks about us that we think different. But when we ask ourselves if Jesus abides in us, and like I said, the answer for most of us would be yes. Of course he does. I, I received him at Calvary. I believe the blood of Jesus is poured over me. But up for us to say we abide in Jesus, it should be evident in how we carry ourselves in our everyday lives. It just doesn't count on Sunday or Wednesday or when we're meeting with brothers and sisters in Christ. It should be something that should be evident to the world around us as a whole. When we're at work, when we're doing, when we're around folks that don't abide in Jesus, we see that very quickly. You know, it comes out. You know, it doesn't take very long, and language is different than it was at church. Things are just different. Um, if you could turn with me to First John, that's in the back of your Bible. Um, we're going to go to verse twenty-four, and we're going to read through verse First John four six for our first scripture reading. Before I do that, I'd like to pray over the Word. Is that okay with you guys? Okay, Father, we thank You for Your Word today. We thank You that it's going to do a mighty work in us, Lord. It's going to teach us. It's going to give us guidance. It's going to give us all we need, Lord, to um, produce much fruit in which You have for us to produce, Lord. Father, we just thank You for this Word, and we ask that You use it mightily in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he gave us. Chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this we know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist against Christ, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Verse 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Praise God. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. 
We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. John is speaking to followers here of Jesus Christ. He's writing them a letter saying, I need to encourage you in this because some stuff has come into the church that is not of God. They have made their own rules from when Jesus had given them what they need to, you know, the disciples that had given them. You know, of course, John was a, you know, is, was a disciple of, of Jesus. You know, he's speaking, he's speaking to the, the church in which he loves so much because he doesn't want to see them stray away from what the Lord had taught them. But it says, John speaks to the followers of Jesus in this passage very clearly. He tells them that there is a spirit of truth and a spirit of error. And the spirit of error is the Antichrist, something that works against Christ on a normal basis. And I would tell you that would be the world in which we live. It works against Christ on a regular basis. It's, it's just, it has, it's been going on since the ages. They've been working, you know, they've been working against God. The enemy's been working against God for as long as we know. In the world that we live in today, we must discern between these two spirits. John gives us a great guideline on which we can discern these spirits. The spirit of truth will confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That Jesus was actually here. That He was God, all God and all man. That He was the King. You know, He was the one coming to take care of the Jews. But thank God He took care of the Gentiles too. Hallelujah. The spirit of error will not confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. They'll hee-haw around it, so to speak. They won't say that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. And we see that in a lot of places. Um, so just like me, I was living a life that didn't give God glory. I was living a life for Shannon. What I enjoyed, the worldly stuff, it, it, I, you know, I enjoyed what Shannon wanted to do, not what God was calling me to do. So... Um, I was listening to the spirit of error, but because Jesus loved me so much, just as he loves you guys so much, the spirit of truth spoke into my life and I listened. The only reason why I listened, because it freaked me out so much. You know, I still wanted to do what I, I told you. I still went out and did what Shannon wanted to do. But because his spirit spoke to me so clearly when I was getting ready to go, in that it changed me. No other reason why I was changed because if it had to do with me, I, no, I wouldn't have done that. I was enjoy I'll be honest with you, I was enjoying what Shannon liked to do. Um, let's uh, turn to, uh, actually we're just going to stay in the same spot and we're going to verse, read verses uh, 7 through 16. 1 John 4, 7 through 16. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Man, I could stop right there and preach on that for hours probably. Because love, it, it just takes care of so much stuff. The love of God. There's a lot of love. We'll talk about that a little bit here. <clears throat> Verse 8. He does not... He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that, that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to the, be, the propitiation for our sins. Verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him, and He in us, because He has given us His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him, and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. It'll just preach itself. It's the word. 
You don't need a preacher to preach that to you. It'll preach right to you when you read it. You know, I was finding that kind of hard when I was getting this message together. I'm like, this is preaching to me. I could just read the scripture of 1 John and it'll preach. How do people know that we abide in Christ? We just read about it. How do people know that we abide in Christ? I, I like to bring these questions up because that's the questions he brought me. How do people know that you abide in Christ, Shannon? That's kind of how God speaks to me. How do they know? So I put it in one word, L-O-V-E, love. That's how they know that Jesus abides in you and you abide in him. As John says in his letter, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God. Just to speak the word love seems to be easy. Isn't it easy? Oh, I love my children. And I do. I love them with the love of God. I love my brother Josh. I don't even know you guys, but I love you. You're my brothers and sisters in Christ. I seriously do, because we serve the same God of love. If I'm not, I'm in error, right? That was the spirit of error they talked about. <laughs> if I didn't, I would be in the spirit of error. Just to, like I said, just to speak the word of love seems to be easy. But to live out love can be very difficult. To live it out sometimes is really, really hard for folks, including me. Especially to those that are mean and that, are mean, that mean harm to you. But Jesus tells us, bless them that mean harm to you. And I'm telling you, folks, I don't know how you take this, but I just take it straight. That's hard for me. That has to be a thing that God does in me. And because God is love, he does that in us to work, you know, towards bringing these folks to Christ. Even though I mean you harm, that may be the very one that Jesus wants to use you to bring to his kingdom. So I just thought I'd put that out there for you. Today we see all kinds of love, don't we? What they call love. Love of money. There's a love of money. I, I've had the love of money. I know what it's about. Um, love of lust. Our bodies tell us things that are lustful. Our minds go to places where they shouldn't go. So we, we, we kind of concentrate on that. And th that I see is there, there are love of lust in this world. Love of pride. This is a big one for especially men. Um, uh, we, we stand beside, you know, we're, we're, we can be very prideful. And that becomes not the love that we're talking about from Jesus. Also, we have love of ourselves. What's good for me? Just like I talked to you about earlier. What, what works good for me? You know, so it's a love of yourself. But the love that John speaks of in this passage... It's called an agape love. Has anyone ever heard the word agape love? You ever heard that? I looked at it. I'm sure you have. But I'm going to give you a little understanding of it. Agape love is a self-sacrificing love. That means I'm going to give everything. Sacrifice to, make you, to help you. To work in you. Well, isn't that just what Jesus did? He was our self-sacrifice. He was our, is our agape love. He's the one that it was, it did the self-sacrificing. He went to the cross. They didn't take him to the cross. He went to the cross because he knew that's what the Father wanted him to do. He didn't, he didn't go because the Romans told him he was going to go. He went because he knew that was his lot in life. That he had to go to the cross to be, so that we could be forgiven of our sins. Jesus truly tells, um, just like our teacher, Jesus truly tells the world in which we live in that we love them. If, we are, if we're giving them that agape love, they see that self-sacrificing happening and they don't see the finger pointed towards us to do what we want. But we actually start to do things that you know, they need. Maybe, speaking, maybe buy them a, a water in this world. Maybe buy them a soda. That's self-sacrificing. You're sacrificing money to give to someone. That's the type of love. I know it doesn't maybe sound like much to give somebody a water or a soda, but some people may see that like, no, no one's ever bought me anything like that before. You know, so it, it's a self-sacrificing love that needs to continue in us day in and day out. Uh, let's turn to John, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 15.
And we're going to read the verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser, the one that takes care of the vine, the vine dresser. And this is Jesus speaking. It's in red letters. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Even the stuff that bears fruit, he's got to prune it back so he can make better stuff. And like I said, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes and it may, so that it may bear more fruit on top of what it's already bearing. You, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you buy, abide in me. This is Jesus speaking to all of us. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be cast into the fire and burnt. I don't want that. But if I'm not bearing fruit, that's what happens. <laughs> I mean, the word Jesus speaks it clearly. Verse 7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Oh, I love that scripture. If we pray and ask for whatever He wants, you know, He, he gives us the desires of our heart. Verse 8, By this my Father is glorified, and you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Yes. Praise God. We see Jesus telling us is that we are like branches attached to Him. We are attached to him like a, a tree or a vine. We are the branches. He is say he's the you know the tree as a whole. If one of those branches is not bearing fruit, then God cuts it off and throws it out to be burnt. There is no way that we can bear fruit unless we abide in Jesus. We have to. There's no way we're gonna be, we're gonna we might bear some fruit, but it's not gonna be godly fruit, and it's not gonna be the fruit of truth. It's gonna probably be the fruit of what of error. That's what comes forward most of the time out of a, you know just doing things our own way. But if we do things the way Jesus has prescribed for us, we can bear much fruit for His kingdom. You know that's what it says at the end here that He wants it's for His glory, not for ours, but for His His glory. Our glory is going to, I'm telling you, we're going to have many, many things in heaven if we just do the things that God wants us to do right here in the now. If we will just uh, bear much fruit for Him, you know, for His kingdom. I like verses 15 and 7. It says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. You see, Jesus is speaking and says, If you abide in me and I abide in you, Whatever you, whatever you desire. If we, if we are asking for Jesus to work in us, we're working, we're doing His will. So when we ask what we desire, our desires turn into what Jesus wants and to said of what we want. It's that where the agape love comes together with it. He's, he's saying, you're doing this in love. You're doing this in agape love. I want, I want to, your desire is to do good things for people. I'm going to give you that. You know, on a regular basis, we can see that day in and day out. If we'll just ask the Lord, where is it that I can show this, this, this agape love, this self-sacrificing love? And trust me, there's places every day for anyone and everyone to do that, including me. Once again, Jesus shows us, shows us the benefit of abiding in Him. He, <clears throat> excuse me, where we abide in Him, He wants to bless His children. He wants to give us the desires of our hearts. He wants to guide us and direct us in all that we do. We just need to abide in Him. Why do you think that Christ wants to abide in you? I asked you that, and I'll just give you a little pause. Why do you think Christ wants to abide in you? You see, if you let Christ abide in you, then, he, then you can abide in Him. I know it's kind of a 
play of words, but this whole scripture reading that we're doing is kind of wrote like that. You see, if we let Christ abide, if you let Christ abide in you, then He can abide, then you can abide in Christ. When Jesus abides in you, people start to take notice that something is different about you. When they start seeing the Jesus that's within within you, that something starts to change around you when you start uh, acting self-sacrificing because people are used to seeing people me 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 but when you start acting a little bit different and it's not for you it's for god but when they start seeing you live out the scriptures in which we are reading today it becomes altogether different for the world which surrounds us this is and like i said this is where the bearing fruit comes in some of the fruit that people see is love there are different fruits. I mean, that's in a whole other study, and I'm sure uh, Pastor Josh will at some point, if he hasn't already, talk about the fruits of the Spirit. You know, the fruit is, one of the fruits of the Spirit is love. We are more, if we're, uh, people start to see that, that there's love, we are more forgiving. We don't get offended, you know, right away. Um, our language starts to change, at least me, my language began to change immediately. When I knew that God wanted to work in me, my language started to change because I knew from when I was in Sunday school and all those years back that I should not be speaking the way I had been speaking. So all these things started to change for me. Um, when Jesus takes up residence in you, He makes it a dwelling place. He what? He abides. He abides in you. So if we're going to be the dwelling place of the Most High, don't you think we need his help? If, you know, if we try to do this all on our own, it's probably going to end up messy. But if we have his help, if we stay attached to that vine, Jesus, he's going to feed us the nutrients and stuff we need. He's going to feed us what we need. He's going to feed us his word. He's going to have preachers come preach to us. These are things that we need on a, you know, on a regular basis. Maybe we can't come to church every, I mean, every day. But we can listen to some good radio, you know, other preachers, you know, that's the way that he's keeping the word, you know, in you on a regular basis. And maybe even have a devotion that you have at home, maybe even doing it with your wife or, or whoever. The Lord really can work through these ways and, and you know, mightily. Um, one more scripture uh, I want to turn to, and I think you probably all have heard this one. And it's one of my favorite. It's one I pray uh, I prayed over my wife and I before we even headed down here yesterday. It's Psalm 91. It's a very, very well-known psalm. I'm going to read it through uh, its entirety. Uh, it's, in verse 1, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and the pestilence pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand of them may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, the abiding place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Verse 12, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That all wraps it up into everything. He's, he's everything. He's protecting us in everything that we do. But what did it say at first? We must abide underneath the shadow of him. We've got to be under, under his authority. We have authority under Jesus. 
He, he gives it to us when He says, I'm going to come live in you. He gives us that authority by the power of His Holy Spirit. When things aren't going right, we need, we need to take authority over that rotten old devil and say, no, this isn't how I live. This isn't what I'm supposed to be like. If some goofy thought comes into our head, we need to say, no, that's not of God. We know that's the spirit of error, not the spirit of truth. So we need to say, that doesn't speak towards God. So we, when we see those things, we need to understand that God's He's working in us. He's pruning us when He wants to take those types of things out of us. Like I said, nowadays this old world can be a scary place. We talked a little bit about it, a scary place to live. But we have a promise from God, Psalm 91. God tells us that to take refuge under Him, underneath the shadow of the Almighty, um, He will be there with us. And I, I kind of had an illustration. When I was a child, I remember teachers would stand over me. You know, I'm a little guy over here, and you got a teacher that's up here. Well, what happens whenever you, you see a shadow? I mean, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, you know, I see my shadow. We don't think about it too much anymore. But as children, we thought, oh, that's cool. I'm casting a shadow. But when a teacher would come right beside you, it would have cast even a longer shadow. So it would consume your shadow. But that's, I mean, that's why, how I see God. He overshadows me. And protects me in everything I do, whether I'm coming to Claytonville to preach or I'm going to Guatemala to a missions trip. He's protecting me in everything I do on my way to work. He's doing that with all of us. As long as we what? As long as we abide in Him. As I close today, I would like to challenge us to not look at, a, at abiding in Jesus as this, this just one-time thing. It's not a one-time thing. Abiding is continual. It's just like sanctification, or I would even say it's part of sanctification. It's something that He was renewing in us every day. If we will abide in Him, if we will come before Him every morning, every night, and say, Lord, I am within Your confines. I'm within You. You live within me. Lord, help me to do the work that You've called me to do and protect me from all these things that are going on in the world. He wants to do that with all of us, folks. But I want us to, uh, the challenge is to, to think of it, but um, to think of it like sanctification, that it's, it's something that continues. We come to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, right? And that means we abide in Him. But if we come to, if we come to Him regularly, that is something He's just renewing us every day. Abide, 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 abide in me. So that, uh, now that we continue abiding in Him every day, so, so that He can bear the fruit in which He wants for His glory. Because He will show up in magnificent ways if we all allow Him. So today, I thank you for letting us come today. I hope, I pray that the Lord has spoke to your heart today. I'm sure He has. But I, I, I pray that you would abide in Him so that He may abide in you. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Shannon, for sharing the word with us. I uh, pray that it blessed you. I pray that uh, your heart is stirred and you are, uh, walk out of here different than you walked in. Uh, Sandy, you have a hymn for us? 63. 63. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty-three. We can share over here if you. We can share, Sandy. You got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
voices I see. All I have need in thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. As we close, before we do the uh, doxology, uh, I would like to just say a few words. Abiding in Jesus. The question was raised, are you abiding in Jesus? There's a difference between abiding in and abiding with. The question is, are you abiding in Jesus? And only you know that. I don't know that. You and Jesus know whether you're in Him or not. That's a question we have to ask ourselves. And exactly, you know, you know how I conduct these messages. It's a self-examination messages where we have to look ourselves in the mirror and say, "Do we? Are we what God says we are? Do you like what you see? If you don't, change it. Allow God to move in your life to change it. How do you abide in Jesus? Will you spend time in His Word? You spend time with other believers of likewise faith. You pray. You talk to them. You allow them to talk back. That's abiding in Jesus. You live for Him. That's abiding in Jesus. We need to do that. If you want to see your life change, you want to see people around you change, you want to see people come to the Lord, abide in Jesus. That's the best way to do it. It's the best way to do it. So as we be, before we close uh, completely, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to take up the special offering for Shannon and Becky. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for this day. We thank You for Your presence. We thank You for Your Word. Pray that You'd bless it to our, to our hearts and to our minds, that, Lord, we would walk out of this place different than when we walked in. We would have a renewed Light on life, Lord Jesus, and renew understanding of you, that, Lord, that you would be given glory in our lives every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, if we could go ahead and pass this empty one so we could kind of keep them separate.
Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd bless this love offering to Shannon and Becky's life. Pray that you would uh, allow them to use it for your glory, your kingdom. And Lord, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for being here today. God bless you as you go on this week.